Uh, today we are going to dis we are going to discuss about Sp what is Spring Boot and uh, how Spring Boot application is working and uh, what are all the features are there in Spring Boot framework. So yesterday we have created one simple REST API to display Hello Spring Boot application, right? So let me start the server. So server is started successfully. Let me go to the browser and then let me, what is the URI which we have written? Hello world API. We have created hello, hello world API. API in the sense application programming and interface. Now let me hit the URL. So the moment I send the request from the browser, I got the response from the server like, Hello, Spring Boot application. Browser here, browser is the client and uh, Hello, Spring Boot application is uh, our server, uh, which is deployed in Tomcat. So whenever I'm sending the request, I'm getting the response back saying that Hello, Spring Boot application. What is the URI? Hello world is the URI which we have created. You can call it as a API also, as API as well. So now before get into the before get into more in Spring Boot, I want you to explain what is Spring Boot, what Spring Boot will do before Spring Boot, what what are what kind of uh, configurations we are doing. Okay, I'm going to explain you now. If you go, so everyone able to see my screen, right? So you can see. Spring Boot, Spring Boot. So Spring Boot uh, is an open source tool. Open source in the sense, uh, uh, it is not commercial. Like if you want, if anyone can download and anyone can able to uh, do the programs. What, what are all the frameworks available in Google? You can download Spring Initializer. From the Spring, Spring Initializer, you can create the project and you can download it and you can develop your own applications. For that, Spring Framework team, they are not going to charge any single rupee. Spring Boot Framework and Spring all are open source frameworks. Open source in the nothing but it is not commercial uh, tech, uh, frameworks. We no need to pay any money. So that is called open source. Spring Boot is an open source tool and used for developers to create standalone applications as well as production ready spring applications and it uses micro micro architecture uh, which makes it most useful for creating micro services as well okay micro services as well so using spring boot we can create web applications standalone applications and production ready uh, the, the moment you create the spring boot application it will be it, uh, we can deploy into server and we can uh, production ready code is available default by default and and also before spring boot so le let me go to get down here so Spring Boot, right? Yesterday we have written one program. So if you want to run one server, one program in our server, so we need a Tomcat server. But yesterday we haven't downloaded the Tomcat server, nothing. We just downloaded the project from the Spring Initializer. We have written one controller. We have written one method, one API, and then executed successfully. We haven't, we haven't written any code, any configuration files, nothing. Everything taken care by Spring Boot itself. This is the main feature in Spring Boot actually. So we no need to do anything. Before Spring Boot, in traditional Spring application, uh, we have to do a lot of things. Uh, we have to create a web.xml, we have to create uh, configurations and uh, the XML files and uh, bean creations, everything, everything we are going to do that. But you know, the moment Spring Boot came into picture, developer life become very, very easy. We just need to focus on writing business logic. We no need to worry about uh, jar files and uh, uh, required configurations, nothing. We just need to focus on writing business logic. 
now I will tell you how it is going to write the business logic without doing any configuration. You can see in traditional Spring application, if you are able to see the my screen, in traditional Spring application, if you want to write one simple Spring application, we have to write core. There is a different uh, core module. We have to inject MVC. We have to add it into the pom.xml. If you want to connect database, you have to write Spring JDBC, and you have to connect with the uh, Hypernet ORM and the XML configurations and property files configurations and annotations, versions. Versioning also we have to maintain before Spring Boot application. We should we have to maintain uh, versioning compatibility also and uh, manual deployment manual deployment so the moment once you build the spring application we have to deploy in the, into the tomcat server manually so and uh, between configurations also we have to do application context we have to uh, configure into the xml file so lot of, lot of things lot of these these many things we have to do before spring boot in uh, a traditional spring application so once Spring Boot came into picture, we no need to worry about it, all the configurations. Okay, so now if you see auto configuration, Spring Boot, how it is working. So uh, before that, I want you to explain architecture of uh, MVC flow, MVC architecture. Let me go and open MVC architecture. So in Spring application or Spring Boot application, if you create a web application as well as if you create a restful web APIs, Spring will always follow MVC architecture. What is that? MVC architecture. MVC nothing but model, view, and controller. So you can see here there is some uh, have displayed one architecture, right? You can see browser send a request to the MVC application. So browser in the sense, so yesterday we sent the request right from the browser, local host to call an uh, slash hello, our hello world uh, program. So the moment I send the request from the browser, so request went to, where request went? It went, request goes to the controller. Controller nothing but you can see here, we have written one controller, right? Rest controller, hello world rest controller. The moment you send the request, request first uh, request will go to the controller, after that model so we haven't developed so far so after that what we have from controller controller will process the request and whatever business logic we have written inside that uh, controller uh, it will process that request and it will return the results to the client so what will happen request will uh, once you send the request from the browser request will go to the controller then controller will process the uh, request and then it will uh, send a response back to the client. Client in the sense nothing but I, I send the request from the browser. I got the response from the server to the browser client. Hello Spring Boot application. So this is the MVC flow. So one uh, there is uh, another lot of uh, this servlets and uh, filters are being involved in. Uh, during the execution. So when you send the request, first request will go to, it will not come directly to the controller. Okay. The moment you send the request from the browser, request will not go to the controller. There is another servlet being called, that servlet is called dispatcher servlet. What is that? Dispatcher servlet. The moment you send the request from the browser, request will go to the dispatcher servlet from the dispatcher servlet, we'll take that request. It will identify the our controller uh, with the help of there is a set of handler mappings. Based on that handler mappings, dispatcher servlet will uh, 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 identify our controller, and then that controller will process the request again. Uh, dispatcher servlet will get that response, and it will send it back to the browser. So, so most of the people I asked many times in interview. So can you explain me the MVC flow? So he will tell uh, like a request. Yeah, I will send the request from the browser or mobile phone. It will come to my controller, and it will go. It will process that request, and uh, it will uh, execute my business logic, and then it will return the response back to the client. So uh, next, what I asked? Okay, okay before controller. But okay, how I, how controller is identified? Can you answer me? So some people are able to answer. Some people are able to 
see blank faces not able to answer who is who is how our controller is identified the moment you send a request from the browser how our controller is identified with the help of dispatcher servlet i will show you the document okay i will share you the document you can go through it dispatcher servlet so from the dispatcher servlet we will take that request and uh, remaining uh, process will uh, uh, further process will uh, continue from dispatcher servlet from that controller controller to your model or business layer and then it will uh, return back to the response will return back to the client or web application or mobile anywhere so now after that some uh, you should uh, you i i told you right dispatcher server is being called so some uh, you should not believe actually some people blindly uh, by had it blindly by had it in the sense okay request will send the browser then uh, in that case uh, request will taken care by dispatcher servlet and then that dispatcher servlet will forward the uh, re uh, request to the controller then controller will process the request and response sending sending back to the client so uh, everybody tell this but nobody don't know whether really after after once i send the request whether really dispatcher server is being called or not most of the people i asked you i asked in the interview no one is able to answer sir uh, can you prove whether after sending the request whether really your dispatch server is being called or not how you can prove that so no answer i don't know sir that is internal process that is internal process i don't know how it is calling i know only controller is being called so the moment you anyone not only here any institute or anywhere you will learn outside or any people tell something uh, so request go to the controller below there is a dispatch servlet so how do i know whether really the dispatch servlet is being called so now i am going to prove you that how whether request is coming to directly controller or before that request is going to dispatcher servlet how we can prove that let me show you now uh dispatcher so you can see there is a dispatcher servlet so this uh, dispatcher servlet one of the class dispatcher servlet one of the servlet so in the inside this class right inside this class there is a let me write uh, dispatcher servlet instance why yeah you can dispatcher servlet so inside that why it is not recognizing this eclipse one second r not opening at all So if you go inside, this is the dispatch servlet. Dispatcher servlet is available where one of the package called org dot spring framework framework dot web dot servlet. So we have a, during a Spring Boot application creation, we have we have added one dependency, right? Web module. That web module contains uh, dispatcher servlet and also uh, you can see I am going to prove you how this dispatch servlet is being called. So what you can do, now this is not needed for now. I'm just uh, want you to show where this dispatch servlet is available. Dispatch servlet is available in which package? org.springframework.web.servlet package. So now uh, I just opened the dispatch servlet class, right? You can see here, dispatcher servlet. So in dispatcher servlet, uh, there is a methods set of methods you can see do service method what is that method you can see control o uh, once you open the class you just need to press control o if you press control o one window will open there you can type do 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 so you can see two main methods are available in dispatcher servlet what is those methods do service and do dispatch so let me go to do service method once you click on that you can see there is a do service method i will just put breakpoint so most of the people don't know how to debug also so if you want to debug the code you have to just uh, there is a line number right inside that any line number you just need to double click once you double click there is a breakpoint is available so now if you want to debug whether uh, after sending the request 
really request is coming to either controller or dispatch server let now i am going to show you that so let me start the server in debug mode so if you want to debug that what you have to do so uh, there is a top top corner there is a green button right this is normal mode if you run this one application will run in the normal mode there is a left hand side here you can debug there is a debug icon here you have to click on it if you if you click on this uh, icon your server will run in debug mode your server your server will run in debug mode now go to the browser so inside the so now uh, oh, i will do one thing first i will remove breakpoint from here let me put breakpoint first whether my controller is being called first okay so let me our server is started successfully in debug mode let me go to the browser i just send the request so where request came say our controller so request came to directory controller request came to directly to the controller most of the people will know a request will come to the controller there is a another class called sir, dispatcher servlet is there so some people cannot able to answer so now here so let me so you got right the moment i send the request where request will come to here controller now earlier sir you told uh, request will go to the dispatcher servlet first from the dispatch servlet again uh, uh, further request will go to the controller but what is this uh, request came to directly controller so you said uh, request go to the dispatch servlet so why now i will show you that i have did not put the breakpoint there is a do service method i just kept the breakpoint now we'll see breakpoint is available in our uh, controller you can see line number 13 i just added one breakpoint double click just click on double click on that specific line number you will get the breakpoint after next i have added breakpoint in do service method of dispatcher servlet here also i added breakpoint now send the request from the browser send i just send the request you can see eclipse is blinking here so once you send the request eclipse is blinking so request came to our server you can see i have put the breakpoint in controller i have put the breakpoint in dispatcher servlet which one is being called our dispatcher servlet is being called so during the spring mvc flow during the spring mvc flow the moment you send the request first request will go to dispatcher servlet now you got right practically i am proving that so request goes to the dispatcher servlet you can see there is a request object it has do service method is having yesterday we, I, we discussed right what is web service the person who is sending request from the client that is a request and what uh, technically what we can call http request so this is the method do service method is having http request http servlet request so if you go to the request here you can see there is a request available here if you go inside you can see our url whatever uh, url we have written you can see hello world as part of http request there is a uri hello world you can see in browser which api i have uh, uh, requested hello world api i have requested from the client Uh, uh you can see here practically uh, as part of the request object you can see there is a uri called uh, hello world you can see here guys whenever you are learning right you should you should learn in depth actually not simply theoretical knowledge whether it is really calling dispatch servlet or not uh, where is my request where it went how it is identified you guys have to learn in depth in, in depth knowledge okay so if you go so anywhere uh, i am not uh, telling uh, other persons that they are not teaching some people are teaching in depth but some people are not teaching at all they are teaching only uh concept and theory part so because of that once you get into the development none of the people don't know the concept they are not able to write the program what is is what just blindly by hand the code just writing it so when you are whenever you are learning something you have to debug uh, if you want to become a good developer you have to you must do the debugging okay if you are able to do the debug 
you are going to become a perfect developer okay so now you can see here uh, there is a request url so request came to the dispatcher server at hello world slash hello world you can see here sir now from where where it will go there is another method called so if you want you can you can more go in depth okay so you can go to each and every method what is you can see here application context we have discussed right web application context application context and everything is going uh, going to set as part of the request here so here there is another uh, method called i show you right do do dispatch next from the do service method request will go to the do dispatch method i have put breakpoint here also so now what you can do you can just press f8 function so in your laptop you have a key called f8 right f8 some uh, some of the laptops you can press that directly f8 some of the lenovo or hp laptops you have to press function plus f8 so click on if you press f8 if cursor is not coming here then you press function f8 depends on laptop see from the do do service method our request come to do dispatch method from the do dispatch method there is set of code is written internally you can see there is a handler method is being called there is a handler i told you right during the mvc flow execution so dispatcher server uh, once you send the request request will go to the dispatcher server let dispatch dispatcher server let will uh, take help from sorry dispatcher server let will take help from get handler adapter there is a in that uh, api so based on the handler mapping dispatcher server let will identify the uh, your controller how it is going to identify let me go there is a handler method you can see here there is a handler method go to inside that handler method put breakpoint there again press f8 so then see request came in, into insert the handler method you can if you put cursor on handler method you can see handler mapping see you can see handler execution chain inside that you can see here your controller is identified hello world controller your controller is identified with the help of handler mappings okay so here if you go lot of description is your hello 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 world controller rest controller and what is the method say hello spring boot application which we have written in controller class you can see here if you go what is the method which i have written as part of my api creation hello say hello world spring boot application if you go inside put cursor on that you can see that as well you can see I'll say hello spring boot application method and your application context also initialized during the service uh, during the server startup like this you have to debug okay now i will press f8 again so now uh, where request will go now from here okay request came to the dispatcher server let so dispatcher server let will uh, will take the help from uh, mapping handlers handler mapping and then it will go to the handler mapping method one of the chain this is class handler execution chain class so inside that there is a handler method is called so here it is identified our controller then from there press f8 again if you press f8 you can see uh, request will go to our controller you can see from the handler mapping is dispatch uh, servlet will identify our uri with the help of handler mappings and then up from there again request will go to the control is practically proved so the moment client send the request from the browser or anywhere first request will go to the dispatcher servlet and dispatch servlet is having two set of methods what are those methods do service and do dispatch so these methods will identify the handler mappings with the help of map mapping uh, handler mappings so it will identify the appropriate url and then you are able to, uh, our controller is being identified and then immediately request will send back to controller from there again it will get send a response back to the again it will uh, send the request go to the uh, dispatch servlet only from there response is being sent from dispatch servlet to client client in the sense browser this is how 
you people have to learn debugging skills okay so there is one more uh, there is a servlet framework also are there so actually uh, spring framework everything is being built on top of servlet api there is a advanced java right after core java once you learn in advanced java there is a servlet concept the people who is not having knowledge don't worry you don't know i'm telling in depth uh, chair since spring boot internally uh, that advanced concept concept advanced concepts like uh, servlets and jsp all those things on top of spring framework created okay internal boot application or spring application okay so they are implement how they are implemented it now i will tell you one example tv is in our uh, uh, homes right that time how tv is how it looks like it, it is very very small very very small black and white like that now compared to that generation tv and now if compared to as a and today's tv how much difference is there day by day day by day they are uh, someone is typing on a uh, screen yaar who is typing i don't know pritesh koshid pritesh koshid kindly stop uh, typing here on the screen okay okay voice is breaking uh let me might be some internet issue yeah i am audible now guys am i audible uh, can you ping in the message chat let me ping yeah am i audible now can you please reply to yes or no am i audible okay good nice so might be there is a some network problem in middle okay so now uh you got the right so you got the someone is uh, again uh right uh, writing on the display so okay i will ask admin team to restrict that okay so later i will do that so now here you can see uh where we are where we are now so uh, the the moment client send the request from the browser request will go to the dispatcher servlet and dispatcher servlet will take that request it will identify the it will identify the controller with the based on the handler mappings and our controller is being called and then response sent back to the client so this is how you have to learn okay so now i am uh, uh pressing function f8 you can you will you are you got to know the how mvc flow and uh, what is the flow of the application from where request will come from where response will get back okay so now you got to know right mvc flow okay now come back to spring uh, spring boot uh, how spring now how spring boot is working now so we have not written any code nothing we have written so just we have downloaded the project from the initializer uh, spring boot is uh, i just focused on writing business logic I, i just focused on writing business logic i haven't concentrated on writing all the configurations so spring boot is providing lot of features which is automatically let me show you how now what all the things are available spring boot features let's talk about spring boot features here so here you can see spring boot future there is a auto configuration mvc you can see dispatcher servlet so before uh, traditional spring before spring boot uh, in traditional spring application dispatcher servlet we have to configure manually in web xml file web.xml file and uh, that is uh, that is uh, done by spring boot by default now we no need to configure dispatcher servlet everything taken care by spring boot itself 
similarly orm framework if you want to orm framework if you want to read data so transaction management manager everything we have to configure manually so here spring boot framework uh, you have to just need to add the dependency that's it remaining spring boot will take care of it so spring boot is having starters there is a spring boot starter web spring boot starter if your starter web is uh, belongs to to create rest apis or under to create web applications for that we need a spring boot starter web uh, uh, dependency is there you can see if you go to our project explorer there is a palm.xml if you open palm.xml you can see the moment we added the spring web module you can see spring boot starter hyphen web dependency is added into palm.xml so here this module is having uh, all the configuration related to uh, spring okay so next spring boot starter jpa what is this new starter jpa if you want to connect with uh, uh, spring hibernate okay, if you want to connect with hibernate or jpa that i will explain you later okay no need to worry i am just showing future so for that we just need to add this dependency similarly rest others and spring boot application is having another feature called embedded servlet container so before uh, uh, traditional uh, before spring boot application uh, we need to download the tomcat server manually we have to download the tomcat server manually and then there is a let me show you show opens perspective the server others let me go to servers you can see here so the left hand side you can see right there is a server tab so here we need to manually down uh, manually add the tomcat server after that in the tomcat server we have to deploy our spring our spring application that is done manually before Spring Boot. Now here, if you see Spring Boot come up with embedded Tomcat server, embedded servlet container, nothing but Tomcat server. And here, three different kinds of servers are supporting by Spring Boot by default. We no need to download Tomcat server. We no need to download Jetty server. We no need to download Understow. These three are default open source but, uh, servers that you can use freely you know these are these three are open source framework open source application servers so the spring boot by default these three servers are available as part of spring boot application by default spring boot will prefer tomcat server by default spring boot is preferring tomcat server so the moment you run your spring boot application uh, spring uh, the moment you run the spring boot application uh so servlet can uh, servlet uh, spring container will instantiate create the embedded server inside that embedded server our application will be being deployed automatically then it will launch uh, server successfully so this is one of the another feature in spring boot embedded servlet container so next after that there is another let me go another feature there is another feature called spring actuators spring actuators uh, production ready future spring actuator is another feature in spring boot application actuator in the sense before spring boot application if you want to uh, so okay let's say you have developed the application after that uh, you have you have deployed the server you have deployed the project in the, your server after that you should monitor whether my server is up or not what are all the configurations available in my server and whether server is performing well or not all the statistics statistics will be uh, we have to write code manually for that whether my server is up or not whether my configuration what is the configurations are configured in our application server and uh, what are all the uh, whether application uh, what are the logs are being logged everything everything we have to write the code where spring boot came into picture we no need to handle those as well spring boot will provide uh, to monitor the application spring by default how uh, whatever project we are deploying into the server that we can monitor all, uh, by without writing the code single piece of code without writing we can monitor our application 
whether it whether our server is up or not so those features and all practically i will show you later now you people just focus on what are the features available in spring boot up uh, spring boot framework so there is a auto config and uh, mappings and info and health checks all the all 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 those things will be available by default in spring boot application it is auto config auto configurations it will mappings and info info belongs to um, uh, auto config in the sense so what are all the auto configurations which it is done by in spring boot application those things information we can see and mappings in the sense urls urls all the mappings uh, in the controller whatever we have written the apis all the all those things we can see with the help of mapping mapping you uh, mappings uh, section and similarly there is a info there is a health checks health check health, info in the sense uh, uh, what, what is this project belongs to what is uh, uh, what are the configurations what are all the uh, things being involved in our project everything will be displayed in the info section next health there is a health future health in the sense our application whether it is down whether it is successfully started or is there any problem those metrics we can check with the help of health api and there is another feature called metrics so many features are there in spring boot application by default the moment we deploy the application into the server uh, the moment we deploy application to the server these are all the feature by default available next there is a uh, spring profiles uh, another feature called spring profiles spring profiles nothing but so uh, uh, once uh, before uh, let's say you have developed the application so before our application goes to the production there is set of environments like uh, developer developer environment uat environment stage environment and production environment so those uh, if you want to deploy in uh, different environments spring boot automatically will provide spring profiles feature you can deploy you can switch anywhere anywhere you can deploy your application with the help of spring profiles if you configure dev environment your application will deploy it into dev environment dev environment and developer environment if you want to deploy your application in testing environment uat user acceptance testing the, those are those things i will explain later focus on concept so if you want to deploy the application in uh, uh, testing environment so you can uh, easily deploy into uh, testing environment if you want to deploy your application in production and stage environment you can easily switch to deploy any kind of environments with the help of spring profiles so spring boot is having another feature called spring profiles to switch your application to deploy any kind of environments you can you can see here spring profiles is a powerful feature of spring boot that helps and segregate different components in your application using profile you can enable uh disable you can enable or disable a component in specific environments like dev environment uat stage and prod okay this is another feature so next go to another feature called inbuilt junit support there is another feature called inbuilt junit support if you are working with spring boot application by default spring boot come up with junit uh, support inbuilt junit support by default junit 5 is being available in spring boot application before spring boot application we have to manually add dependency of uh, junit framework uh, in normal spring spring applications whereas in spring boot junit support will be available by default if someone don't know what is junit don't worry i will explain you when that uh, concept came into picture i am showing now what are all the features are available in spring boot uh, next next concept learning curve learning curve is very very easy learning curve nothing but if someone you can see i have written clearly if even if you don't have spring knowledge 
the people who is not having spring knowledge you are mostly like to deal with business logic already i told you initially initially the moment we download the project from the spring initializer uh, we just download the project and we have not done any single configuration we just focus on writing our business logic just i have written the controller class um, my requirement what is my requirement here i just want to display hello spring boot application so i just downloaded the project i just simply focus on my business logic whatever uh, i want to uh, expecting i just written the code i just run the server i got the output in the browser that's it so in spring learning spring boot is very very easy you do not have who, who the people who don't have knowledge on spring framework also can work with spring boot without having knowledge next that is why i started with spring boot application initially so once spring boot uh, once we cover all the spring boot concepts and with examples with real world uh, applications after that i am going to explain you spring as well traditional spring how how spring, traditional spring is working before spring boot okay guys so after that there is a architecture spring boot architecture so before that i just wanted to summarize what are the features available in spring boot let me show you one by one auto configuration the very first feature what is that auto configuration what is the second one spring boot starters spring boot starter in the sense you no need to add the dependencies manually you are applic the moment you download the project your application is ready to start without doing any configuration that is another feature called spring boot starters dependencies next so there is a embedded servlet another feature called embedded servlet container so you no need to download the server manually spring boot come up with default servlet default uh, servers those are tomcat jt and undertow there is another feature called spring boot actuators it is production ready feature so you can uh, monitor your application after deploying into the server you no need to write the code for it the moment you download the project you can deploy into the server you can monitor your application and you can do you can perform health checks of your application with the help of spring boot actuators there is another feature called spring profile by using spring profiles you can uh, switch any environment to deploy your application like dev uat stage and prod and next there is another feature called j unit support spring boot come up with uh, j unit support by default for j unit 5 next another feature called without having spring knowledge any people can learn spring boot application they just need to focus on writing business logic you no need to worry about it all the configuration which is needed for for spring application now come back to spring boot architecture spring boot arch this is the architecture of spring boot so the uh, you can see postman in the sense uh, we can send the, the, the postman is one of the client so here how ha how we have tested our application from the browser here who is our client browser is our client so similarly there is a uh, so here one example given from a uh, postman client one of the client from here assume as of now you assume this is one browser okay so let's uh, request send to Uh, you can see once the uh, client send the request from the client and then request will go to the controller and then controller will process the request to the service layer and service layer will will, will talk to uh, business layer sorry dao layer and then your dao layer will talk to your database then response also will come in same direction request will go to the controller controller will go to the service from service to dao and dao will talk to your database this is the architecture of spring boot application uh, as uh, spring boot sorry spring boot application as well as spring mvc application traditional spring on uh, spring boot both are having same architecture what is the difference in in spring application traditional spring application all the configurations you have to do manually 
whereas spring boot application you no need to do the configuration by default all the configurations is available that is the only difference between spring boot and spring framework you, you, are, you guys understood right architecture is same uh, whether it is spring boot or whether it is, it is some traditional spring application uh, uh architecture is same the only what is the difference the whatever configurations are going to what are, what are all the configurations required for our application that is done manually in a spring application traditional spring application and uh, uh, in a spring boot application you no need to perform those all the auto con uh, uh, configurations manually that is the only difference so i and also i explained one more thing when you client send the request request will not go to the controller directly where request will go request will go to the dispatcher server at in middle the client there is a client and controller your server bit there is a in client and server uh, before uh, request come to the controller there is a dispatcher server at request will go to the dispatcher server at dispatcher server at will forward the, the request to the controller then controller will go to the service then service will talk go to the repository layer from there it will talk to database i will explain you later what is controller sorry what is service layer what is do layer everything we are going to develop with uh, uh, application one real world project we are going to create it okay you have to understood the concept so, so so do, during the Spring Boot RK controller, that is what we have written yesterday. Hello world REST controller. The moment you download the project from the Spring Initializer, you just focused on business logic. That is what is the first step during the uh, during the Spring or during the Spring Boot uh, Spring Boot architecture. What is the first step we have to write? There is a controller available during the Spring Boot flow. Spring Boot diagram says request will go to the controller. So controller. So that is the reason. So I just write one method to return the response. Hello, Spring Boot application. Now you people are understood properly why. Uh, uh, why we have written the controller if i explain if i told yesterday you people will not understand that's the reason first i will write the code then once execution is started successfully i will show you the architecture you guys can easily okay so guys this is what uh, now tomorrow onwards we are going to write one simple a few simple APIs to create a, a social media application. Okay, social media application in the sense in social media, how many people will be the uh, social media in the sense who, who will be there in social media users and clients, users are uh, who are all using internet, who are all browsing the uh, uh using the uh, browser, internet, or Instagram, those kind of users and uh, simple you can call it as a users uh, we are going to create one simple apis on users okay user api we are going to create tomorrow i will explain you it is very 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 easy so let me write uh, one uh, simple simple method to return date api let me write to make you understand not only hello world application whichever you want just write the program and uh, change the method name what is the method now let me uh, two days date. Two days date. That's it. Let me stop the server as of now. Terminate date. Okay. So there is a class called local date. Right. Local date is available in our JDK from it is available from uh, JDK future. So now I will return just new local so, sorry you can write directly local date it is a there is static methods are available now that's it the, the local date is a class and it has a static method called now method so what i have done local date i'm just returning i'm just uh, local date dot now i am going to get the local date now so what is the api uh two days date let me create the uh, two days date 
today's date. So I have created one simple API today's date that will return what is the date today. So now let me start the server. Server is started successfully. So now go to the browser. I have copied the URL, right? You are right. Just go to the browser. Paste it. See, you can see date API is the date is return. My server is returning today's date. What is the date today? October 6th, 2023. So now if you want to debug, sir, here I have two methods. Really, my request went to here or here. So I will put breakpoint here. I will put another breakpoint here. Let me run my server in debug mode. If you you have to learn debugging skills also, guys. Initial from starting now onwards. Whenever you are going to create the application, uh, any application, whenever you are going to write any application, you always debug your code whether my request is coming here or not. Okay. So now I I just put the breakpoint here. Let me go to which API I'm going to call. Oh, spell mistake. That is not uh, correct. Two days. Sorry, two. Two days date. Let me stop again. So as of now, we have added only one dependencies, right? Whenever we are modifying something, if you want to reflect those changes, we must stop the server and we must restart the server. So uh, every time we have to do it or not, what? So some people may ask questions, sir. Every time we have to restart the server, no. So this is in step i am showing you later point of time there is a another dependency if you add the dependency we no need to restart the server every time that i will explain you later okay so as of now you concentrate on basic spring boot application okay if you basic spring boot application if, uh, if you have spring web module the moment you add only spring web module Whenever you are modifying the class or whenever any changes, not only in class, any changes which you have done in our application, if you want to reflect those changes, you have to restart the server. Any class, classes or property files, anything if you modify, you, have, you must restart the server, restart the server to reflect those changes. Okay. So now today's date, let me copy, go to browser and paste it, click enter. You, you are getting that time. So uh, I, I didn't uh, run the debug mode. Let me run the debug mode. I think, uh, let me run the debug mode. I just, uh, how, how we can run the debug mode? There is a button called left hand side. You can see a debug option. Here you have to click. Or you can right click on the project. Where you can right click, you can directly right click on the project. There is an option called debug as, run as, run as. Run and, run as will always run normal mode. If you want to run, there is a debug as also. This is another way of running the application. Here you can directly debug as Java application. If you click on that, your application will run in debug mode. So now I just executed in debug mode. Let me send the request. I just send the request. You can see Eclipse is blinking in bottom of the our, uh, tab so you can see here see uh okay request came to dispatch servlet why because earlier i have kept the breakpoint here right so i am re i'm removing breakpoint here now so uh, before going to our see before going to request to the controller request went to the dispatch servlet so why i have put the breakpoint here to prove whether uh, dispatch servlet is being called or not so i, I am removing breakpoints now Okay, so after removing breakpoints, it will directly go to the my controller. See, date API is being called. The moment you send the request from the browser, request goes to the work controller. You can see, yes, it's came to my controller. My API is being called. You can, you can, if you want to inspect. So, what is the value here? So, without showing, without uh, without seeing in the browser directly, you can debug the value in your controller itself. How you can debug your value? Just select that statement, local date dot now. Right click. There is a option called inspect element. There is a option called inspect element. You can see if you come down, there is a inspect. Just click on that inspect. You can see what is the value which is returning. 
okay so this is how developer has to debug your code whichever you have written now just uh, i'm terminating the debug point yeah, what you have, if you want to terminate the debug point what you have to press f8 you just need to press f8 in any any one of the laptop if f8 is not working then what you have to do you have to press function f8 if you press function f8 or f8 request will pass successfully now 2023 october 6th date is returned okay guys i think most of the people understood right what is here uh, what we have uh, what we have uh, learned today mvc mv what is the flow of mvc application so for, from where request will go to our server directly so all the and what are all the features in spring boot applications we went so far today okay guys we'll catch you tomorrow and guys make sure you guys have to practice this whatever i have done in the class uh, you have to practice this practice you have to write the simple apis whatever your own application okay write it put the breakpoint check whether dispatch alert is being called or not check your controller is being called or not uh, and check you can debug what is the value contains what is the response response it contains what is the value so you have to debug okay We'll catch you tomorrow, guys.